Good afternoon and welcome to the Return Homestead. My name is Mike and my wife Marty and I homestead 50 acres in southeastern Kentucky. Today we're back in our 2001 Fleetwood mobile home that we're doing a complete remodel on. We're working in the master suite right now. We've gotten a good bit of the electrical settled. We do need to remove the light that's here in the bathroom and we're going to take a look at getting a light strung up in the shower. So Marty has gotten most of the insulation put up. Obviously the sound is a lot better now in this room and it's going to stay that way. It'll improve even more as we get the drywall up on the walls. What? Oh. <laughs> it's funny. It will improve even more when we get the drywall up on the walls. In fact, Marty has already gotten one piece up. She really likes to move ahead quickly. This piece of drywall was available and it was the right size. So we got a piece of drywall up already. So we've already started on that project. But for today, let's take a look at all of the rest of the electrical, see if we can get some things tied down. So we replaced this light. We're not going to be using the light that's up here in the ceiling. We're going to put in a vanity light. That's what this temporary light fixture is for. That's where the vanity light will go. This one no longer serves a purpose, so we're going to go ahead and take it down. These little lights are not usually that difficult to remove. There's usually a little nut on the bottom that allows you to take the globe off. And then once you remove the light bulbs, we should be able to see the screws that are holding the plate up. Not a big fan of this type of light fixture. Uh, it's just a thin pressed metal. Um, they put these extra pieces of insulation in here because the light bulbs usually generate too much heat. And you can see the discoloration from all the heat on the inside of this metal plate. Just not a real big fan of this installation. Don't even need to undo the screws. Just give a little turn. That slides right down. And yes, this has absolutely no power. Don't worry folks, I know this is dead because I cut the wire here in the wall. So this is not connected to anything. Just pull off these wire nuts. And the light just comes right off. Piece of cake. doesn't really matter if the wire stays up in the ceiling. If I could pull it out, I would. It doesn't want to move. So I'm just going to cut it off and get this box out of the way. Now it's just a question of how did they actually mount this little cover piece that was providing a large flat area for the light to affix to. Do you want my flat bar? Don't need it. Huh. It's a couple of big long staples. Two, to be exact. That, in my opinion, is about useless. Well. It's just a thin piece of paneling. And then this OSB 
also just held up with staples. Peels right off. Seems to be the only place where the staples bit into anything solid. So this entire faux beam set up in the center of the mobile is just that. It's faux. Use your, your cutters. Yeah. It might as well have made this out of cardboard. No. It's almost too heavy to be held up with uh, staples buried in drywall. This crack, not just a normal separation of the drywall here. This is what it's supposed to look like. It's possible that when they put this wall in, they really did push up on the ceiling enough to cause that separation. We've got this big divot in the ceiling, and that's probably where that was coming from. Um, it is also possible, based on the hole in this exterior wall, that at one point when this house was being moved around, it was backed into something. And that could have caused enough of a shock to create this bubble in the drywall and shove the roof line up a little bit here in this spot. Either way, it's all watertight, it's sealed, it's uh, well contained, and we've built our wall to accommodate it, so I'm not worried about trying to repair that in any way. The only way to fix this would be to rip the entire ceiling down and start from scratch, building new trusses and leveling everything out. And uh, my wife is ready to have this place done, so the last thing we want to do is more demo work. So we're going to work around this, we'll make it work out in the end. Let's get this other piece off of here. Really, really weak construction there. We may be doing a little bit of damage to the texture on the ceiling, but we're going to be refloating this texture anyway. We're just not fans of this uh, linear pattern in it. Like something a little more random. Yep. Plus, we've got a hole up here we need to cover up. So. We'll get to all of that when we're doing drywall. All right. We did that without losing too much of the insulation up here. This is good cellulose insulation. Does a great job of keeping the house pretty warm and cool in the summer. So we want to disturb that as little as possible. Still got to do some cleaning on this wall to pull staples off, uh, get some of these big gobs of glue off of here before we hang drywall. But once we put drywall on this, all of this roughness gets covered up, so it's not going to be a problem. Well, good. That's that light fixture. When I originally pulled the electrical lines in here for the shower, I pulled all the way across the top of the wet wall and we were going to put in some sort of a wall fixture on the outside wall of the shower. They make some really interesting uh, square plastic LED lights nowadays that have a very diffuse light that comes out not only through the front surface, but also, th also through the sides. And it makes for a very interesting way to light a shower, but we've investigated every one we could find at Lowe's and Home Depot. Not a one of them claims to be waterproof. Some of them do say that they're damp uh, or for damp areas, but that doesn't mean you can put one in the shower. We've been looking also at exterior lighting fixtures. There are some wall sconces and other, other appliances that are designed for the outside around your front porch or back porch, but all of those are made out of metal. 
and they're designed for an exterior environment. So they may be waterproof and even stormproof, but they're not designed specifically for a shower. That means that they're also not available in the Lowe's and Home Depots that we've been to. So we haven't been able to put our hands on and see how any of these are mounted. We're gonna be using a Palisades tile for the inside of the shower. That is a vinyl tile rather than a uh, standard ceramic tile. So it would have been easy to drill through and be able to mount any light fixtures we decided to go with. But I was a little concerned about making sure that those penetrations in the wall remained waterproof. So we've changed our mind about this installation. It would be very cool to set up that way, but the easiest thing to do is still just to get a light fixture in the center of the shower. So if we put one right in the center, we can just use a slim line uh, like the ones that we put in the laundry room. That's gonna provide more than enough light in this small enclosed space. Now this is always a little bit messy cutting holes in uh, drywall overhead. Uh, it is gonna make a big mess and hopefully we can get the hole in exactly the right spot. Just wanna be about parallel with the ceiling. Not too bad. I've got all this good cellulose up here. I don't wanna waste any of it. I wanna leave it up in the ceiling. I'm just gonna stuff a plastic bag up through the hole just to hold everything in place while I work on getting the wire pulled in here. And that'll make sure none of that comes falling out. It's very well packed. It was well put in. Uh, it does a really good job of insulation so I don't want to disturb it any more than I have to. Now we got to figure out how to get the wire from this wall through this top plate and over to our big hole here. And with my paddle bit, we'll just uh, pop a hole through this top plate, straight up through the ceiling. And now we're kind of on um, uncharted and uncertain territory here. How am I gonna get this wire fed through this hole here and then get it bent and back over to where the lighting fixture goes in. Y'all, I got no idea how this is gonna work out. We're just gonna give it a shot and see what we get. Wait, I can give you some scrap wire. We have a lot of that from what you've cut out. I'm gonna see if I can get my hand to go all the way through. Okay. Oh, that's gonna be nice if that works. Oh, I got it. Sweet. So I had to disturb the cellulose a little more than I intended to, but we got the wire through. Sweet. Wow, a lot easier than I expected. from about a quarter inch of insulation off of each wire. I really do love installing these. They're such an easy way to put new lighting in. That just clips right up into the drywall of the ceiling. And then your junction box holds all of your wiring for you. So we open the box up, separate out our wires. Use a screwdriver to pop this little tab open. Our electrical line just snaps right down into that little clip. Bend the 
wire over into the box. We make our connections black to black, white to white. This black one, white one, and then the bare copper goes to the ground wire. Check everything, make sure it's not going to come loose. And just it inside the box. Close the lid. You're all set. No wire nuts? Nope, no wire nuts. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fast and easy installation. I really do like these things. <laughs> There's a little notch on there to help you align the plug correctly. And then this screws on. You gotta Shows set your light in. level. What's that? Your light level. Um, I've got it on the one step down from brightest. Okay. Does that seem right? We'll know in a minute. We can always change it. And it's just a simple thing. Get a plastic bag out of here. We don't need that up in there. One tab over, push the other one up. Seat your light in place. Really simple. Now, because this is a shower, I will come back and we'll put a bead of silicone underneath this fixture. It'll make it more complicated to change this light if and when it burns out. These are 30 to 40 years uh, life expectancy on the LEDs, so I'm not expecting to have to change these out. So we'll go ahead and silicone the back side of that to make sure we don't get any water penetration through there. This should be a good installation. This will provide plenty of light for the entire space, but we'll know for sure once we get the electrical and the switch hooked up so we can test it out. So let's go work on that. So we've just gotten the light put into the shower. This is the wire that we'll need to bring power down to the switch. And it needs to connect to this wire, which is currently hot. This wire penetrates the ceiling in a spot where the wall used to be. We've moved that wall out uh, quite a few inches there. What are we out? About six inches further out. So I've got to get a hole here in this top plate. And then we've got to move the wire over and get it down inside of the wall. Ooh, there is no way to fish that over. I don't have a fish tape available. What do you think, hon? Can I just cut a notch out here and we'll patch it up later? All right, so that's going to be the solution. We're just going to cut a notch in the drywall. Uh, this will leave us a gap that we can push the drywall or push the wire through to get it over to the wall. And then I'll just put in a hole here and we should be able to feed the wire to the inside of the wall. Yeah, we'll know in a few minutes. There's the hole. I did uh, push it through at an angle so it'll make it easier to fish the wire through. And I can now see where I need to cut to to pull this wire across. And because this is a sharp razor knife, I don't want to be cutting up here on this insulation with any kind of tension. Uh, around a hot wire. So we're gonna have to kill the power in order to continue here. All right And before we start cutting on this We're just gonna double check it make sure we don't have any electricity here. Everything's dead While I'm cutting through this drywall. I also want to make sure I don't cut into the wires I don't want to damage the insulation on the wire There we go Break through that last little bit. And now we should be able to feed that wire down through the hole. Got 
got a lot of excess wire here so to avoid having to deal with the tips of the wire sticking out go ahead and trim these off and let's see just how much extra wire we've got a lot a whole lot wow not really sure what the thought process there was but i make it all work do you know which one's which i don't but it won't matter oh so i'm just going to leave enough wire there to make sure i've got a decent pigtail cut off all this excess so i don't have to try to feed it all through the hole Every time I decide where the mark is, I always cheat myself just a little bit. Again, wire stretchers, really expensive items. Try to avoid those twists in the wire. Flat wire is a lot easier to work with. And then one more. And we know that this wire is what creates the circuit for the light fixture in the toilet room. There's already a switch on it over by the toilet. So we do need to make sure that these wires come back together. But we're going to use that electricity in three different places. We're going to let it go out to the toilet room fixture. We're going to take it over to the closet and also to the shower. So essentially three lights on the same 15 amp circuit. All right. Now all I got to do is decide where I'm going to put the box. So we don't have another junction box, but technically this is a junction box. As long as we can get a cover over the top of it, that will be a sealed compartment to contain all the wires. And that's all we're really looking for. Just mount it right there, what do you think? Mm -hmm. All right, that actually went pretty well. We've got the wires pulled over, we've got the box mounted. Had a hard time driving one of the nails, and it does not go all the way into the wood. We're probably hitting a screw or something, but the box is secure enough inside of the wall. I'm not worried about that. So we just need to get the wires landed inside the box. feed the wires through. Just pulling the wires through tightly to make sure they're not going to impede the drywall. We'll try to put it on the other side. And I'm not too worried about that gap. That's maybe two feet, so it's well supported. I uh, may want to staple this one down or up, whichever the case may be. But other than that, these wires are fine. And then all we have to do when we're done is put this plate over the top of the box. Everything will be sealed up, good to go. All right, let's get these wires landed. All right, it's always easiest to work on these if the wires are all the same size, so I could cut them off right here. But we also have to shove all this wire back up inside of this box. I don't need this much wire. Once these are all tied together and inside the box, they're never coming out again. 
So I probably want to clip these off a little bit further up here. Just want to get them all in about the same spot. And that's going to leave me with a lot less to shove inside the box. Another way to ease that process to make them go inside the box easier is to remove more of the insulation. So that leaves you with only single conductors that are much easier to bend and twist into where you need them. We're going to strip these back all the way to the edge of the box there. And since we're really creating three branches to the same circuit, all we're going to do is color code everything, tie all the whites together, tie all the grounds together, and tie all the blacks together. Black ones will be your hot wire where the power is coming into the box. And the white ones are your common for your return back to the breaker. Strip back about a quarter inch of the insulation. And then I'll hold these together with some wire nuts. It's always easiest if you can get all of the wires bunched up in your hand at approximately the same length, especially when you're trying to shove this many of them into a wire nut. Trust your wire nuts, but always check them. Pull back on each one of the wires, make sure it doesn't come out. If it makes you feel good, you can put a wire nut on the ground wires as well. They don't really need that, they just need to be twisted together. That's so any stray voltage will go to ground, and it doesn't need a lot of coaxing for that long tips there to make it easier to shove back inside the box and then we begin the work of folding this in literally just rolling everything up into the box and that's it safe and secure now we got to get our switch on just like the last box to make this easy on myself I'm going to trim off some of this excess wire I know this wire is relatively expensive and you hate to just trim off tiny little pieces like that, but leaving yourself slack to do this is a godsend. The first time you pull one of these wires into a box and it barely clears the outside lip and you're trying to make a wire nut tie off to it, you'll thank yourself uh, from there on for leaving an extra six or eight inches of wire on there. Back the insulation and paper. Turn the excess off. Strip just a, about a quarter inch from the insulation off the wires. If you're not quite sure how much insulation you can or should strip, there's always a gauge on the switch or outlet that you're installing that'll show you. It's just a line uh, carved into the plastic that'll show you the suggested length of exposed wire and like before the, uh, the other times that we've done this with a switch we're just going to tie the commons off because that's just a return back and then the hot wires get connected to the switch do one on one side one on the other you might be wondering well how do I know if that's the right way to do it or which side those should go on uh, it doesn't matter <laughs> just put them in there switch is on you'll see it's on if it's off you can't see anyway
that down good. Make sure the wire doesn't pop out. Yeah, and then before we push everything back into the box, let's at least see if we got power out to the light in the shower. I'm going to go turn the power off. Can you see the switch from there? Let's see if this thing works. Ah! What do you think, hon? I like But the light switch is upside down. <laughs> <laughs> is that upside down? I'll put it in the box any direction you want it. I want it so you push up. Push the top to come the on. The top to come on and the bottom to come Got off. It. That's plenty of light for a shower. Um, the lighting panel idea that I had would have probably given us about five times the amount of illumination, but we really don't need it. And right now, this is just insulation up on the walls. Once we get some drywall up and then get those Palisades tiles in here, they have a much shinier and brighter surface, so they'll reflect the light back into the shower. This will be perfect uh, for a shower space. Doesn't need any more illumination than that. Well, I think that's going to be about it for our electrical work today. We do have a lot of other construction work that we need to do. In coming videos, we're going to be resizing and remodeling the door into the bedroom. So we've got to rebuild that wall a little bit, move some electrical switches around over there to get everything ready for the new door that's coming in. Marty's not real happy with mobile home doors, neither am I. So we're going to be replacing all of the interior doors that we can with some regular doors. And there's some thought process involved in making sure that we have a door frame that's set well enough to hold that new door. So we're going to be working through that next, and then we'll be moving on to completing the electrical uh, in the bedroom area. So we'll be working on completing the electrical around the bed, getting the lid, which is the drywall that will go up above on that soffit. So we'll get that lid put up and get the lighting installed over there. Once we have all of that done, we should be about done with the insulation and we'll move on probably to doing some drywall. You may notice that this is a bathroom and I haven't done any plumbing yet. It's not my favorite thing to do. So we'll put it off to the last minute, uh, probably get most of the drywall up and hung before I start in on the plumbing. Once we get the plumbing done, it's tape and mud, paint, and we'll be ready for finishing touches. So please do continue to join us for these videos. You're gonna see a whole lot of construction methods and little tips, tricks, and workarounds that we've come up with over the years that allow us to overcome all the obstacles that we find inside of a wall. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. You can even hit that bell icon to make sure you get notifications. Give us a thumbs up while you've got that window open. We'll see you next time.